Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Saturday morning, and I hope all your Saturday dreams come true. I've got some work to do this morning. Uh, go lay some tile, but I will be back with any and all news about our Dallas Cowboys. And I have to tell you, I am getting excited as can be because um, the one thing we have to look forward to uh, with the Dallas Cowboys is the draft. And um, in case you don't know, uh, me and some of my Cowboys Mafia, uh, Game Time Brian, Prime Time Phil, Chef David Wiley, are all going to be going up to the draft in Detroit. And I was looking this morning. Um, last year when we went to Kansas City, uh, our hotel was, uh, I guess, about five miles, five, seven miles away from uh, the location. Of course, when the NFL comes to town, the prices go sky high. And looking through for the hotel um, and things that uh, we were going to stay at, we were looking out further to get a cheaper price. And I started thinking about, you know, you could go to Windsor, Canada, which is literally across the Detroit River um, and stuff. And there'd be great sight lines and things. But we actually found a hotel in downtown Detroit. Um, it's not cheap, but it's a, a double tree that's got suites. So that way the four of us have plenty of space to go in. And the NFL has uh, started getting everything set up for the draft in Detroit. Uh, start setting up where the stages and everything are going. And um, I am amazed because the if you've been to Detroit, I've, I've been to Detroit uh, many, many times for Thanksgiving. Uh, I was there for the Super Bowl, probably the most incredible Super Bowl that you can imagine because they brought back all of the former MVPs at that Super Bowl. And it was the handing off of uh, Paul Tagliabue to Roger Goodell. It snowed actually the night before the Super Bowl there. Um, and it was amazing to me because having gone to Detroit year after year for Thanksgiving, how many buildings were boarded up and how bad Detroit downtown was. During the Super Bowl, they basically made pop-up stores and they cleaned it up and it was incredible. Since that time, Detroit downtown has had a revitalization. They moved the Joe Louis Arena. Um, they've got the whole river walk down, uh, down there. And a lot of the stuff has changed since I've been there. So I'm looking forward to being there. And I came across this uh, news clip. I want to show you guys here just to give you a little taste. What's kind of cool is when I was looking originally at the hotel that we were staying at, um, not knowing exactly how everything was going to be set up. If you've been to where Ford Field is, so that's where the staging and stuff is going to be at, um, uh, what is it called? Um, Martis Park, okay? So for Martis Park, that's where the draft stage will be, and it will continue all the way down to the waterfront at Hart Plaza. Hart Plaza will be where the NFL experience will be and stuff. So they literally are taking up a big chunk. So that's going to include uh, the uh, in front of Ford Field. It's going to include all of Greektown casinos and all that, all the way down to the waterfront where the Wren Center and all that is. So that's going to be huge. For me, here's what I found out. Um, the hotel we're staying at, it's $40 parking per day, and every time you leave, you got to pay for that. We are literally four-tenths of a mile from the stage. That's it. We are four-tenths of a mile from the NFL experience. So we are going to be right there in the heart of downtown Detroit to bring you coverage. And let's get a little taste from the news. All right, now we turn to the NFL draft. Detroit really on the clock right now as we are a little more than 15 days away from that first pick which right now belongs to the Chicago Bears, by the way. This was a couple days ago. Look at construction downtown on that huge structure where those picks will be made. Three to four 
100,000 people are expected to attend over three days. We'll be one of them. People expected downtown security is going to be high with all hands on deck for Detroit police. Yeah, tonight, Chief James White talking about all that's going into this, and Sean Lay went one on one with the chief today. The NFL draft in downtown Detroit, it has to go off perfectly, safely. A major key in that safety, in your safety, are cameras covering every inch of downtown, looking at everyone, looking out for anything at all. Even the people mover the you see up there, the, the rail, goes right to our hotel. <laughs> your time as police chief city of Detroit, this has to be the largest thing, the largest project you've had in front of you. Yeah, it is, and, and we've been planning now for over a year. Detroit Police Chief James White tells me more than 300,000 people will pack downtown for the NFL draft. You, it has to go right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge responsibility. Our community is poised for this success. Uh, we're going to be on a national platform, and we know uh, everyone's watching. We can tell our story and show, show the world how we can be. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'm with the chief inside DPD's real-time crime center where cameras are monitored 24-7. Captain Erica Frederick is in charge of DPD's crime intelligence unit. This is a big job for you. It's, it's a huge. huge job. It's huge, but, you know, a lot of teammates in place. It's not just me. I'm just the face right here. So. Feel the pressure of it? Oh, it's definitely pressure. It's definitely so you'll be safe. And here is one big detail everyone needs to know about the draft. 100% no weapons whatsoever. <laughs> no weapons. <laughs> You'll be screen going in, and again, I want to make, I want to emphasize, when people hear weapons, they think, think of guns. It's a weapons-free zone. Guns and other weapons. Knives, uh, brass knuckles. It is a yeah. weapons Your guys zone. are there protecting, so there's no reason for you to bring any personal protection. We will take care of the protection. You don't need any personal protection. Yeah. All right. Here live in southwest Detroit, not downtown at the draft, because... The point is, DPD also has neighborhoods and neighbors to also police during the draft. Bottom line, guys, every police officer in the city will be on duty during the draft. Back to you. Yeah, okay, Sean, we appreciate it. 14 days to go. Yep. Okay, there you go. So, you will be safe at the, the draft. We can pretty much guarantee you that one. Um, I am looking forward to it. I cannot literally wait can't believe that we are going to be that close to the draft so on to the dallas cowboys because of course we are them boys and we are them boys that don't seem to do anything um as what we have heard uh recently is the dallas cowboys have done nothing as far as the contracts nothing that C.D. Lamb, you know, we've heard that C.D. Lamb uh, would be uh, probably worked on first. But what we're hearing is the Cowboys have had no um, conversations, serious conversations, um, with uh, C.D. Lamb's people. So we don't know what the heck is going on with that. We don't know if there's going to be anything that's going to be done. Um, it's kind of crazy, to be quite honest, um, that here we are, nothing has been done. And as far as Micah Parsons, do any of you believe that, that Micah Parsons won't be playing on the fifth-year option? Devontae Smith, who was drafted, same draft as Micah, they're, they're already working on his contract. Yeah. And the Cowboys are sitting around doing absolutely nothing on these. The question here is, is, um, and I'd actually like to talk to my man Dan Salio about this a little bit. Um, I've heard, shout out to Game Time Brian, that um, Dan was saying that uh, he will get back with him after the draft. And that Jimmy Johnson um, is kind of busy until after the draft read into that what you may is this mean that he is working with the cowboys and jerry jones and the uh other question would be is is he the one who's orchestrating what the cowboys are doing is he literally saying we're going to take this year we're going to evaluate everybody and then decide if this is the route we want to go, 
I mean, again, all in, we may take it as all in is something immediately and going out and getting free agents. We may, the, the Joneses along with Jimmy Johnson could be, we're going all in and it's going to take time because we have to figure out who are the guys that are going to be the ones to help us get there. You know, we've gotten so much flack about Micah Parsons um, with, you know, the idea that he's not showing up, of course, with the quarterback with Dak Prescott, that, you know, he's not showing up in the playoffs or C.D. Lamb having to grow, putting everybody on edge, putting them in a pressure cooker to try and figure out who's going to be here, especially before you end up spending a bunch of money. Now, this plan and idea could potentially cost you a lot more. If Dak Prescott goes out, has another incredible season, you know, we're talking about 60 right now. It may be 65, 67 next year. CD Lamb, if he goes out and has another all pro season and leads the league and you don't get this deal done before then and Justin Jefferson gets his at 35, you might be looking at 40 with CD Lamb. Um, and Micah, if you end up getting him together and getting his head screwed on to where he's not wearing thin and, and whoever jackass said that's mine, then you may be looking at him being a $40 million guy um, to decide whether or not you want those guys to be here. The question is, is, is Jimmy Johnson, was that just, you know, we had a couple of drinks and it sounds interesting to talk about. And, you know, Jimmy, you're just my consultant, this, that, and the other. Or does this actually have teeth where Jimmy Johnson really is part of the equation? I would love to know that. And I'm going to ask, uh, I'm, I'm going to text Dan Salio and see if I can get uh, his take on that or not, you know, because he's, He's gone through and basically, you know, he, the thing, here's the thing about uh, Dan Salio, and I'm, I'm learning this, is he is one of those guys that's going to tell you not what you want to hear. He's going to tell it like it is, and your feelings be damned. You know, he's going to tell you the Cowboys ain't done shit for 30 years, and I can't disagree with that. And maybe this is the Joneses doing something different. You'll remember as sad as it was, we literally had to wipe the slate clean and start all over for the Cowboys to get the Super Bowl with Jimmy Johnson. And this might be Jimmy Johnson saying, we got to start over. We, we got to get cap room. We have to figure out which one of these guys are the cornerstones and which one of these guys are our Herschel Walker trade. And if that is the case... They, that that might not be the worst idea in the world. It's going to mean that this year is kind of a red shirt year. It is a basically try shit out and find out what's going to stick to the wall. We'll see. So before I get my ass up out of here, let's go to ESPN and listen to their thoughts. On should they stay or should they go? Lamb, in my in my opinion, when you look at Dak Pres Dak Prescott, who's the quarterback and getting him the football over 1,700 yards, surpassed Michael Irvin this year for most most yards in a single season by a Cowboys wide receiver. We know how dependent the Cowboys are on throwing the football. They haven't got better on their offensive line. They haven't got a running back yet. So C.D. Lamb, sit out until you get your money. So he has one year left on his contract, and so does his quarterback. Dak Prescott and that got our Adam Schefter to thinking about the Cowboys quarterback situation what they should be thinking as the draft approaches here's what Adam had to say earlier this week what are they going to do at quarterback if they lose Dak that's interesting and that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys might just be a sleeper team in the quarterback market during the draft because at some point in time they might have to draft a quarterback higher than you think because Dak is going into the last year of the contract and it might be time to get somebody in there to start grooming him just like they found Dak Prescott in round four might be time to go find another quarterback in another round to begin to get him ready hmm. certainly an interesting uh, uh, an interesting perspective do we still have Jordan Reed here I was gonna ask Jordan what he thought there he is 
Jordan, what, uh, what, what do you think about the Cowboys potentially adding a quarterback in this draft versus whatever else they need to do? Why? I wouldn't understand it if they did it just because you traded a fourth round pick for Trey Lance last year. So you have your developmental guy there already. The Cowboys need starters at multiple spots. I look at their offensive line. You need a new starter at left tackle or left guard, depending on what you want to do with Tyler Smith. You have you need a new starter at center. Tyler Biotis is now gone to the commanders. They still not, don't have any depth along the defensive line. And oh, yeah, they need some new linebackers, too. So they have backed themselves into a corner just because they haven't been very active or active at all in free agency. They have backed themselves into a corner with having to hit on a lot of draft picks in this draft class. So I'm looking at the Dallas Cowboys. You have to win next year. Nothing matters what you do during the regular season. You're going to be graded next year on what you do in the postseason. They back themselves into a corner now, forcing themselves to hit on so many draft picks just because they haven't been active in free agency. And oh, yeah, you need a new running back. So I didn't even name running back with Tony Pollard now gone. Yep. So you need at least three or four starters to come out of this draft class. I just don't understand the strategy that they have had this offseason, and there are a lot hinges on what they do in the upcoming NFL draft. Yeah, their inactivity on the free agent market has opened them up to a great deal of of, uh, of criticism. Uh, Harry, do you think it's warranted? 100%. You look at the Washington Commanders, they got better in the offseason. You look at the Philadelphia Eagles, they got better in the offseason. They made moves. Hell, even the New York Giants went and got someone, Brian Burns, in, in a trade uh, from the Carolina Panthers. The one team that did not make, you know, drastic move in that division has been the Dallas Cowboys. So if you're going to deem yourself as a Super Bowl contender and you want to compete coming up, I think you're going to have to draft guys that can, you know, bring success to your football team immediately. You don't have time to be drafting a quarterback. And like Jordan just mentioned, you did that with the Trey last year when you gave up a fourth round pick for Trey Lance. So your developmental guy is already there. Put, use all your draft picks. on Your the developmental guy. Help you right now. What do you think, D-Wood? Well, I mean, listen, absolutely. Everything goes back to um, Dak Prescott's contract. Right. You think you know, that's held them held them up from doing stuff this offseason? Absolutely. Off season? When you have a $59.5 million cap hit, 55. you know, you're strapped. You can't do anything in via free agency. That's why this whole thing is so perplexing. It's like Dak comes off of a, a legit MVP-type season. And there is no movement on the contract front before free agency to add pieces you know, that, that could help the Dallas Cowboys, you know, be one of these contenders in the NFC. And so, you know, I'm sitting, I'm sitting back thinking, do they really want Dak Prescott moving do, forward do after they? this year? Do they? I mean, do they? I know it takes two to right. tangle. Right. Uh, I know no, it takes two. Like, you got to have the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott, but there's been no movement. None. None why for the Dallas, for those two be, sides. Why would there not be movement? Because that's the that Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys aren't sure that Dak is the guy that they want, or is it that the Cowboys or think that Dak app. will want to test the market, which he should, because the Dallas Cowboys have allowed Dak to be in a position where he can test the market. So I agree with you. The whole thing is perplexing. Jerry must know something we don't. Everybody does not know because what they've done, all of it together, doesn't make a lot of sense. I have heard it said that the Cowboys are having the worst season of any uh, team in the league. Is that extreme? Is that an extreme reaction? They won 12 games. Like, how much more do Wait, they need? Uh, here, I say all that. Watch them go 12 and 5, and we're sitting here, like, wondering, like, oh, okay, are they going <laughs> to win in the first round or not of the playoffs? Like, who, who, the, who the heck knows with the Cowboys? They haven't done anything. I don't know. But, yeah. No, no, no. But that's no, schedule they have to play. I will, say, I will say this. I will say this. They put themselves in a position where they have to be really good in the draft. But here, this yeah. is the last well, week. Well, so, sent this stat. Less than 10% of guarantees on their current roster come via free agency. Like, this is not a team right. that's out there, like, throw. So they this, never this have. This is who they are. I just didn't expect them to be like this this year. Well, thank you, ESPN. All right, good people. So the question begs, is Jimmy Johnson the guy who is running this shit? I don't know. Sounds kind of crazy. Nothing else makes sense, but, you know, we're still looking for the Cowboys to do things that they don't do normally. But... You know, we all are out here to talk and try and figure out what the hell's going on. And I wish I knew, friends. I really wish I did. But we can only speculate. 
As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I appreciate all of Cowboys Mafia. And I am still waiting, waiting for anybody to discuss the Dak Prescott lawsuit that is being dismissed. So far, the only one that's talking about it, and he's got, got proof, is Dak Attack. Attack. 